1160. And Dave Pigeon, spokesman for the State System of Higher Education, joins us on the line this morning. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. David, good morning. Good morning, and how are you? And I hope everyone's New Year is off to a great start. Yeah, it, it is. David, we've got very, very low volume on you. Is there anything you can do from that end? I can certainly try. Um, is this any better? That's much better. There you Wonderful. go. Now we got you. Now we got you. We are a solutions-based agency. <laughs> well, you've certainly got a few things to solve as we begin the spring semester. It's a good place to start. IUP, the other universities in the state system, all getting uh, beginning with the second semester now today. And, um, and it was really, really interesting to read the blog uh, last week by Chancellor Greenstein um, as uh, uh, he, he started out. Uh, acknowledging a lot of problems that exist both within the system and within our society. And he ended up uh, with, uh, I think the title of the, of the blog really, really, uh, really brings it home. There's still a lot of hope uh, for the state system of higher education. It's just a lot of things that have to be figured out. You know, that's right. And we come to work every day because we know how important that public ed- higher education still is for the Commonwealth. I mean, just take a look right now at where we are from an economic standpoint, and there are obviously a lot of people who have suffered economically because of this pandemic, and opportunities for post-secondary education and affordable post-secondary education, they need to be there for communities like Indiana County and elsewhere across the Commonwealth so that we can begin to rebuild as the pandemic, hopefully in 2021, but even in 2022, begins to uh, fall away. The New York Times article of last month, uh, which did cite IUP and uh, sought comment from Chancellor Greenstein, uh, really generated a lot of reaction here in Indiana uh, both on both sides of uh, what has developed into a bit of an argument about where the state system and how the state system moves forward from here. From the state system's standpoint uh, and, and in consideration of that article. It pointed out some very, very pointed problems that are not unique to state system schools and certainly not to IUP, uh, but uh, there are so many different approaches that people are exploring to solve some of these problems, and the state system redesign right at the beginning of that uh, for the 14 universities that are owned by the state. Uh, what was the reaction within the offices of uh, the state system when that article came out? Well, I can tell you that we interacted with that uh, particular reporter extensively between October and December and provided a number of different documents and perspectives um, that helped reinforce factually the data that we have been seeing. And one of the most important ones let's, let's talk about is the affordability edge that we have or did have in the higher ed marketplace. In 2009, the difference between a state system university and a state-related university like Penn State or Pittsburgh, uh, in terms of total cost of attendance, was $6,800. Today, or at least the last numbers we saw in 2018, that difference was now $2,000. That's not sustainable. We are supposed to be the affordable option for residents in Pennsylvania. So there is work to be done. That's why we are engaged in this reform agenda so that we can be here for the next decade, two, three, and four, and on um, as we continue this mission. Another thing to also keep in mind, regardless of a pandemic, the law does not change, and the state law says that we are to provide not just a high-quality education, but an affordable one as well. In order to do that, um, the various market forces that are out there are, seem to be stacked against the state system, and hence you have things such as the state system redesign, and, and on the local level, IUP, uh, approaching it uh, from their own perspective and, and trying to look for solutions. Um, Chancellor Greenstein mentioned in his blog that he's heard from a lot of the universities that are involved in integration efforts, some that are naughty. He did mention IUP as one not uh, but one that he's gotten some good feedback from. When that feedback comes in, it can't just sit there. You can't just let it sit on the table. It has to be chewed up, digested, and and uh, something has to be done with it. So let's talk a little bit about 
some of those conversations Chancellor Greenstein has had and uh, how they are then manifested into points of action? You know, one of the most important aspects of, of the system redesign and the reforms that we are pursuing, Todd, is that this is way beyond a top-down approach. Multiple constituencies, students, faculty, staff, administration, but also trustees, alumni, others who uh, not only are involved with the state system, but are committed and supportive of the state system, they are a part of this. They are part of the working groups that are developing plans for integrated universities. Uh, as you know, Chancellor Greenstein goes around to every campus every semester. This time, of course, in, in 2020 and 2021, it's going to have to be virtually. But when he does, he meets with multiple constituencies to have those conversations and to gain, those feed, gain that feedback, and not just feedback, but also involvement to help shape public higher education in 2021. And you'll hear Chancellor Greenstein talk about the sort of hope and excitement that gets generated right now uh, at that grassroots level, in part because the opportunity is here. This is the chapter in the history of these universities where those that are involved and choose to be involved have an opportunity to reshape public higher education into the future. And there are, of course, a number of different avenues that are being explored, um, which we can touch on. But I think it's really important to touch on how collaborative and consultative all of these processes are. It's way beyond top-down. It truly is inclusive of a lot of different points of view. There is a certain sense that uh, the pandemic may be on the verge of turning a corner, and there's certainly a parallel uh, with the state system redesign uh, and and where it stands in its ability to uh, to send us off in a in a whole new direction, um, the feeling within the hallways there at the state system and among the universities, uh, are have we begun to turn the corner? Is the corner in sight? Are we in the midst of of making it, uh, or are we even further along than that? No, I certainly think that that we can see the the moment of hope and the progress that are ahead of us in 2021. You mentioned about integrations, and as I'm sure a lot of your listeners know, particularly in in your area, we are looking at how we can bring three universities together, keep campuses open, but also find cost efficiencies at scale. In, In western Pennsylvania, we are looking at, of course, California, Clarion, and Edinburgh. And a successful integration does support Indiana University because we are a system, and when uh, when one university succeeds, the system and the other universities succeed, and the opposite is also true. Um, this year on integrations, you're going to see a lot of advancements. We are expecting to see preliminary implementation plans in April for the integrated university uh, with the possibility of a final approval in July. And we're pretty excited about that because we've set out some pretty bold aspirations. The chancellor has led these groups into beginning to think about Looking at the total cost of attendance, how can you bring the cost of attendance down by as much as even 25%? Um, that's an incredibly exciting but challenging incentive. Um, so there are areas of hope. Um, you've seen Indiana um, take some pretty bold steps on what they are going to do as far as being sustainable, not just for students but also for uh, their entire community. Education opportunity to remain open so that students in your region, whether traditional students or even non-traditional students, have those opportunities at an affordable price to advance their careers or even improve their lives. We are still, and we will will remain committed to the idea that public higher education is a pathway into and beyond the middle class. And I can't think of of a more important time in our history and all of our lives right now with this pandemic and our economic circumstances for affordable post-secondary education opportunities to be available in places like Indiana County. Chancellor Greenstein also talking about diversity and inclusion. Uh, And Dr. Denise Pearson, who we've had here on Indiana in the morning, uh, is leading that effort from the uh, vice chancellor's chair and uh, the chief uh, officer of diversion at the state system universities. Um, the, the chancellor himself said that uh, Dr. Pearson's going to have a, a very public report of some sort coming out soon. Uh, what are some of the uh, 
preliminary things that you have heard about that report? Yeah, I don't want to get too far ahead. Um, obviously, we want to uh, save a lot of that for anything that uh, Dr. Pearson may be able to share to the board um, come our uh, meeting in February or April or and any board meeting upcoming. But let me share a couple of things, I think, for a matter of perspective. One of the most important aspects of our new efforts here on diversity, equity, and inclusion is about closing attainment gaps that currently exist between white students and students from underrepresented sectors of our, of our population, students of color, for example. Um, second year persistent rate. White students in 2019 had a second year persistent rate of 79%. And persistent rate means from first to second year, you stayed enrolled at the university where you started. Mm -hmm. And that's a really important statistic for us to know how well we are doing. For students of color, black, brown, and others, Second year persistence rates was 64.8% in 2019. That's about a 15% gap. We have to address that. We have to confront that. Six year graduation rate, white students in 2019, 65.2%. Uh, those students of color, 43.8%. Have to do better. We must do better. And one of the ways that we want to do better is by confronting those attainment gaps. Another way is about accountability, too, Todd. And we have put information up, pashi.edu, there's a diversity, equity, and inclusion dashboard where not only can we hold ourselves accountable, but the public can hold us accountable for progress on this particular issue. It is far too important for us not to be accountable. So we are inviting the public to hold us accountable for the goals that we've set out. And there are a number of other initiatives that we can address at a system level, but it's also important at the university level. Um, we've talked often about the IUP Free Speech Project and how that could be something uh, that could be scaled across uh, the system at other universities. Another important aspect, if I may, Todd, mm -hmm. is that one of the things we've heard from students is that incidents on campus, hate speech, discrimination, intimidation, um, we are looking at how can we address those campus by campus, of course. Each campus has to figure out how to do this. But how can they be addressed not only quickly but also effectively? We are collaborating across all 14 universities. Each university has a DEI officer in its cabinet level. And they meet regularly to collaborate, swap ideas, garner feedback, trying to figure out how can there be response structures on campus to quickly and effectively address those issues. So all of those things are things we're going to hear much more about in the coming months. David Pigeon, thank you so much for visiting with us here this morning at the start of another semester at IUP and its uh, other institutions in the state system. We appreciate your time. Wish all the best to everybody here at the start of 2021 and the spring semester. All right. Have a great day today. Thanks, Todd. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, County, WCCS, County.